Okay, hi everyone. Um, Facebook is being a little glitchy, so just an FYI, if you get kicked off or the stream is freezing while you're watching, just make sure to come back and watch the replay. So far those have been working just fine, um, but I have no idea why, but sometimes the stream just isn't um, keeping up with the Facebook Lives lately, so that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and show you three beautiful cards today. And I have to give a huge shout out to the lovely Linda Schnabel. So the designs that I'm showing you today were modified heavily from her set. So she had a beautiful trio of cards using the beautiful Art in Bloom set. So the stamps, dies, and bundle um, come with an embossing folder as well. And uh, I just simply modified some of her colors and a few things here and there. So big thank you to her for um, contributing to today's video and I hope you guys like it. So as I mentioned, we are using the Art in Bloom stamp set, the Bloom hybrid embossing folder, and the Bloom dies. So I'm going to show you how to use those at various stages on our video today. And I really hope that you like the projects. So just an FYI, this bundle is in our annual catalog. You can buy it as a bundle with the stamp, embossing folder, and dies. However, just a heads up, you can't buy this embossing folder by itself. It has to be purchased either with the dies or as the entire bundle with the stamp. So it's kind of a fun thing Stamping Up's trying out. But... Um, that's okay. So card number one today is simply making use of a couple of the stamps in there. And this little tag is also from the die set. And then we're featuring the background embossing folder as our focal point for this card. So if you'd like to follow along today and you want to make all three cards, let me just give you some measurements for you to start out with and that way you can be ready to go and craft with us, okay? So you will need three card bases of Highland Heather. These guys are going to measure five and a half by seven and three quarters, okay? So you're needing three of them because we're actually using the exact same base for all three of the cards, we're just going to decorate them a little differently. So once again, that was five and a half by seven and three quarters. And then here, just like we would with a normal card, we're doing a score line at the four and one quarter inch mark, okay? So you can make yourself three of these if you'd like to follow along today because then you'll have them handy and ready to go. Well, you are also cutting we're going to cut two pieces of paper both the same size okay so three of them in the highland heather those are going to be our card fronts here this is three and three eighths by five and three eighths so three of those in order to make all three of the cards and for the inside you can see i've just put a little note card to write on this is once again three and three eighths by five and three eighths. Okay, so that is perfect for the inside of all of our cards. And this is going to be perfect for the outside of all of our cards. So let me show you how we're going to make this card. So I'm gonna just move this out of my way for now. And let's teach you how to use that embossing folder. So. Hopefully by now you all have our lovely Big Boss machine um, or something equivalent, maybe the old Big Shot or a cuddle bug or something. The platforms you're going to need are this large base plate. So um, in the top corner, if you have this one, it will say number one. This is that big fat base plate. Next, we're going to need the beautiful embossing folder that I mentioned earlier. And you can go ahead and put your paper inside, like so. And then to run it through, 
you're also going to need your 3D embossing plate. So this does come in the dark gray if you've recently bought the machine. If you bought it when it first came out, this would be the color that you own, which is kind of the see-through blue, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put your embossing folder straight onto the big fat plate here and your 3D plate on top. Because we're not doing any cutting, you don't need to worry about having some of those sacrificial pieces handy. So we'll use those later and I'll show you how, but just run this through once. Oop, bending everything. And what you should find is a gorgeously embossed piece of paper, okay? You will need to have this big boss handy for other tasks, but I will walk you through those as I go. And you may also want to just catch up on some of them because I've gone ahead and pre-prepped some of my pieces in advance so that you're not having to sit here all day watching me do things, okay? So these pieces here, let's start putting them together so that you can see how that works. I like to do a whole perimeter of adhesive when I've got something this detailed. So I'm gonna use my tape so that you can really clearly see where that adhesive is going, but you're certainly welcome to use the seal as well. That would give you a nice um, solid border also, okay? So here we go. So we've got a nice perimeter like so. Take off those strips. And we can add this to the front of our cart. Okay, so make sure you put your flowers however you want them um, so that you're happy with the background look. Because this card you are seeing quite a bit of the background. On the inside, we're going to put that white piece so that it's out of your way. This one isn't as necessary to do the full perimeter. It's nice and flat. You've got lots of wiggle room with it. So I just put some adhesive in each of the four corners for that. Okay, and we're going to attach this like so. So to decorate this side here, I thought that Linda had a brilliant idea. She took this little stamp that's found in the set. You kind of probably won't even notice it until you start looking. It's this guy right here, and there's also a dotted border. We're not using that one, but we're gonna use this guy for now. And I do need my scrap. Sorry. Need my scrap paper back. We're going to do a little bit of stamping using your Highland Heather ink. So this is the Highland Heather paper. We're using the same color in the ink simply to give a beautiful tone on tone look. Okay, so in this little space here in the side, this is where we're now going to add the strip. So you'll have to stamp twice because it doesn't quite reach the bottom but that's okay. We'll give ourselves just this fun little border. And the reason we cut the paper weird is because when you close it, you can actually clearly see that fun little side piece on there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this guy away because we don't need him anymore. So to decorate, we're going to add that little label that I said I punched out using one of our dies from the set. This I've used the petal pink paper for, and I'm just gonna grab my basic gray ink and one of the sentiments. So there's some really cute ones in there. Um, you could have a never not loving you. I chose you're a rare find just because I thought it would be perfect for kind of my card stash and then I can give this away to any number of people as they come up. So just stamping right in the middle of that space. You're a rare find. We're going to attach this to our card using dimensionals. So I'm just gonna put four of them. 
on the back here. But before I do that, I also thought it was really cute to uh, add the bow that Linda did. So you just grab yourself a piece of white thread. It can be about six to eight inches. I did way more because I wanted to show you guys a really large bow. Um, and if you're uncomfortable with bows, maybe just go ahead and give yourself 10 inches to work with. It's not a big deal. There's plenty of twine on your rolls. And uh, this one, for instance, I just took out of one of my old paper pumpkin kits. I had lots left over. So I've got a massive bow here. We're going to just hide that in the back of our card here. And the easiest way to attach it, just with a little piece of tape right over the center of it. Okay, so you can trim it after all the other pieces are on the card, but it's just really nice to get it into place. And then you can grab that little tag that we've nicely stamped on, and it's gonna go right over top of this bow in a few different ways, okay? So you don't actually have to trim that much off of this, just maybe a little, little so that it properly fits in my envelope. Ooh, my scissors need cleaning. There we go. Okay, now last but not least, to decorate this card, there is this adorable trio of flowers right here. So I have punched one set of them out with the Magenta Madness paper, and we're going to attach these three to my card. Glue dots, this roll of glue dots, are going to be your best friend right now. Otherwise, you're going to be struggling to attach these. So all I do is I just stick my paper straight on top of a glue dot, and then I pull it off so that the glue is hiding on the back. Okay, and then just add three of them to your project in kind of a random assortment. Like so. And there is card number one. So very, very cute really nice to highlight the embossing folder in the set because you're not really covering it up much. You've just added a sentiment, you've added a little bit of stamping, and maybe a couple little paper pieces, but this embossing folder just speaks for itself. So it's a really, really nice way for you to highlight that feature of your card. So card number two, we're going to step things up just a little bit. Okay, so we are now going to start incorporating some of these stamped images into our card instead of just using the embossing folder. So like I mentioned though, my card, and I've prepped this card, is exactly the same up to this point. Okay, so I've got my nice base, I have stamped along the side here, I've added my two features for writing and for background. And now this is where the fun begins a little bit more. Okay, so what I have done, and I'd like to just show you guys one of the features, is I have stamped the three flowers that come in the set. And the beautiful part of it is they're actually all on one connected stamp. So I only have to stamp this one time and the die cuts them out in one pass as well. So you're gonna see that in a minute because I'd like to show you how to do these. So I've mounted my beautiful little stamps on a block. I'm taking the Magenta Madness ink and inking all over that. So it's got a nice bold color. And we are just going to use a piece of the basic white stock here. Okay, so this flower looks very different than this and you're probably wondering, oh did she sit there and shade every single piece? But no, I didn't. There are also three background stamps that you can simply ink up and stamp straight over top of your project. If you want this to be really light, then make sure to stamp on a scrap paper 
before you add it to your card, but it actually lightens quite a bit. So I'm happy to just put it straight on top. So there are three of them. You have to add all three of them and they don't line up perfectly. They're supposed to be a messy looking stamp. So don't worry if you get it and you're like, oh, I can see white. It's not working. It is working. Okay, so it's just, it's supposed to be a subtle kind of like smoosh look in the background of your project. So we've got three beautiful stamps. There are leaves as well. They come in a set of two. So I used the granny apple green and I did the same thing. So I first stamped with the granny apple green in full strength on the outside stamp. And then when I added this shadow feature, I did end up stamping off on that one because I found that my green, this is my original one, it blended a little too much. So I got more definition when I first stamped on scrap and then stamped onto my paper. So I've cut these three out um, for you so that you don't have to watch absolutely everything. But I do want to show you how that die works because it is really, really nice and it, it makes your life really easy. Okay, so bringing back our big boss here. Sorry, we've got lack of room. Okay, the platforms that you're going to need now is base plate number one. This is that big fat one. This is kind of like your sandwich plate. You will now need the die cutting um, kind of shim, I guess. So this is number two, this little shim. And then you need two of these clear cutting plates. So you can see they're very different looking. This guy on the right here, this is the one I always keep on the bottom. So it gets mangled and cut like nobody's business. But my one on the top stays nice and clear because I actually always face my dies down towards this cutting one. And so you never really end up messing up the top one. Okay, so let's set our piece of paper on top of this messy cut one. And we're going to take our three in one die here and make sure that it goes around all three of the flowers. Okay, now when I have that set, I will put this nice clean one on. Um, just an FYI, these dies, they will not cut if you don't have this. Sorry, I want to show you this, but it's not focusing. Do, do, do. There we go. Do you see the raised edges of the die? That's what actually cuts through the paper. If you were to try and put that flat side on your paper, it won't work. It won't cut through the die. It won't wreck anything, but you'll have to try again. Okay, so let me just reset that. I'm putting my other clear piece straight over top. So I've made a sandwich. I've got two pieces of bread on a nice plate. And I'm running this through so that when I'm done, I will have three flowers nicely cut out for me, all in one pass through my machine. Okay, so let's get back here and start actually adding these to the card. Okay, so these three flowers, let's put dimensionals on the back of them because we want them to stand out. We want them to be the focus of our card. So they're gonna all be popped up on dimensionals and that will make it very easy for you to add the leaves and other features as well after. Okay, so I have three of them. Your choice right now, I would say, before you take off the backings, just start playing. See where you want them to sit. You can go anywhere. And just keep in mind, we're going to put a little tag here, so it doesn't matter if there's any empty space. Okay? So when you're happy, then you can take off the backings, put them in place, and they may look different every time you do this. That is all right. Yeah. 
you and face that one out this time. Okay, so I have three nice flowers. Now I did the exact same tag that I had before. So I'm gonna pop that up on dimensionals so that it can rest on top of these four flowers and be a little bit um, of a focus point. I have done a bow once again, and this time instead of attaching it to the purple, I'm just gonna pick one of those pink flowers and rest it on there. Again, just get that middle attached and you can fuss around with it after everything else is in play. Okay, you can even make it bigger, smaller, whatever you need to. So once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and add your little tag. And like I promised, it covers up that dead space that I had in between the flowers here. But we're not done. We wanted those little leaves. Okay, so we're gonna bring three sets of leaves. They're nice and connected, so you don't have to worry about doing six leaves, just three. And once again, I'm using my glue dots. So I'm just gonna rest the glue dot on the bottom, and then we're tucking this in behind the flower. Okay, so lift that off. Just find a few different spots that you want your leaves coming out of. Like so. And if you want to add a little sparkle, now is a great time to grab some rhinestones. So I've just got a couple of sizes. This is the medium and then the smallest from the sheet that I've just cut up to bits. And you just add those as a little focal point for you. Okay, so there's card number two. You can see how we still have the same card background. We still have the same feature on the side. We're still using this sentiment, but now we're adding flowers. And that really takes the focus away from the embossing folder and focuses more on the stamps. So that's a fun little feature. Now I want to show you a card that we focus on the embossing folder and the stamps at the same time. So here's card number three in our series, and you can't see it as much, probably until I hold these up for you, but do you see how this is a very flat stamped image? And this one is kind of raised and embossed. That's because we're using the embossing folder to give us some little details for our next card. Okay, so I'm gonna set these two aside. I will have pictures of them up at the end. But let's go on to card number three. Okay, so this guy, bringing back that base that you're now super familiar with. This is why I told you to just make three of them all at the same time. So I've stamped the sides, I've got my embossed and my white, that's all attached. So I'm not going to worry about doing that for you guys. What I want to feature is how to do these embossed flowers, okay? So do you remember last time, last card, where we stamped our beautiful flowers, we cut them out, this is where we would have ended up. We've got three flowers that are nicely ready to go. However, we are once again going to grab our embossing machine. Like so. You will need the fat base plate, and you will once again need your embossing folder and that 3D embossing folder. You don't need anything else, okay? So inside our embossing folder, we're going to take our flowers, and it doesn't matter which side you put them on, but I kind of like to do it on the indented side. So that's the one that has the Stamping Up logo simply because they like to slip off this, um, this top one if I was to rest them on there a little bit more. You can, but I find it easier to put them on this side here. And so we're going to put all three over top of their corresponding flowers. And the nice thing is you can do the same 
with some of the leaves. Okay, so there's a detailed leaf, a couple of them. You can also emboss those and uh, cut those out nicely too. But for now, we're just going to do these flowers. When you're happy with where they're sitting, you can go ahead and close your embossing folder. We're going to put this on top of this base plate here and the 3D embossing plate goes on top. Roll this through your machine. Okay. What comes out now is three flowers that have a gorgeous amount of detail to them. So instead of being flat and just a stamped image, they now have all the characters and all the ridges, if you guys can properly see, from the embossing folder. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same idea that we did on the previous card and start by just laying our three flowers out popping them up on dimensionals first. And then from there, we're going to tuck some other things in behind and kind of add a little bit of life to our project. Trying to use up all of my old paper pumpkin adhesives. I get so many of them because there's way more than I need. There we go. Okay. So if you're not sure where you want things, don't take off the backings quite yet. Just make sure to put them on the card and make sure you're happy with it. But I think I know where I'm putting mine. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with my largest flower, the medium one, just a little angle, and then adding this last one down here. Okay, so I wanted to add a bow for good measure again. You can also forgo this if you really hate bows, but it's kind of, it's really cute. So just add that into the background, your project. You've got your ends. You could probably make those a little larger. There we go. And just stick that down okay and our sentiment is going to be popped up on dimensionals once again two three four and this one's going just right in the middle here I will, there we go, probably just trim this a little bit, perfect, okay, cute, but we need more, so this is exactly like we had before, except instead of using these two stamped leaves, I am now grabbing the detailed leaves and the solid leaves and cutting these out with granny apple green and vellum in order to just bring my card to life a bit. So I need six of the detail leaves, which they come in a die that cuts two, so I only needed to run it through twice. And then these vellum leaves, there are two of these solid ones. So once again, I only needed to run it through three times, sorry. Let's get going. So grabbing your glue dots, you're just starting to place these leaves all over your project, kind of wherever there's a gap between flowers that would be a natural kind of look for you to have a leaf in. Okay, so the nice thing is these are pretty um, versatile, depending, like you can put them either way, you don't have to pay attention to what side is the top of the leaf and what side's the bottom for the most part. You can if you want to, but 
I'm just grabbing them and they're going to look great either way. Okay, so I've tucked all six of my vellum leaves in. Now we're going to grab all six of our detailed ones. So you'll notice when you're cutting them, um, the set cuts out like one fat one and one skinny one. So my suggestion is to keep those together and uh, to just put them in pairs of a fat one and a skinny one. It'll just make your project look a little bit nicer. A little bit more uniform, probably. Okay. And the reason I use the dimensionals on these flowers is because it's so easy for me to now go inside and tuck something in behind them. Sometimes you have to kind of work at it, but most of the time they're pretty okay. There we go. And the green, they don't have to line up exactly with your vellum. They can just be off-centered a little bit too. And to finalize this card, some bling never hurts anyone. So we'll add a couple medium sized gems. And then this one, I'm actually going to add one small one to the top and one small one to my little sentiment as well, because I thought that looked cute. So here is our cards. I hope you guys enjoyed them. They are an amazing set. Let me just put all three out for you. So you can pick and choose whether you want to highlight that embossing folder, whether you want to highlight the stamps, or whether you're looking for a combination of both. It requires a little bit more work, but as you can see, it is definitely worth the effort. So this is probably, you know, like that over the top card that you would send for a wedding or somebody really, really special. And, um, and they'll just love it to bits. This stamping along the side is something that I need to really play with because it's such a neat feature. Instead of having a card that completely closes, it gives you this extra little uh, definition, I guess, of your card. And it's just kind of a fun measurement too for future cards. You could stamp anything along the sides there. If you didn't like the stripes, you could even take some of the leaves and you could stamp those kind of at back and forth ways down the stamp. So yes, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you'll check out Linda Schnabel's blog. Um, if you just type her name in in Google, you'll see a gorgeous set of cards that she used the pool party card base for. And, uh, and then instead of doing embossed flowers at the last card, she shows you how to do a, um, like a yellow flower center on her cards too. So I just really wanted to do the embossing though, but thank you again for joining me and I will see you guys next week. Bye.